Welcome to EPG Part Shala. I am Anju Narayan, retired associate professor from Delhi University. Today we'll be taking up the module titled Socio Linguistic Structures, and uh, in which uh, we'll highlight the uh, views of Levi Strauss and Roman Jacobson. Now, the general understanding of the term social linguistics. Now, social linguistics is a branch of linguistics. Linguistics itself is the scientific study of language. As you all know, language is a medium of human communication. There are plenty of languages in this world. A group of people live together in a community with mutual acceptance and respect everyday life practices. Social linguistics studies about language, culture, and social aspects. The unique, concent the unique concentration will be on human beings speech, that is oral communication, with various social identities such as community, beliefs, religious practices, age, gender, race, and class. Then it also covers the change in their speech as they are in different social environment. Change in their speech will result in the choice of words and phrases, selection of sentence structures, and the use of intonation while delivering sentences. Every individual or community is unique in his or his style of speaking at different social interactions. Modern sociolinguistics has been shaped by the influence of four Western traditions, namely historical and comparative linguistics, anthropology, rural dialectology, and the study of mixed languages. American structuralists realized the necessity of describing endangered American Indian languages before they die. One of the motivation scholars, such as Leonard Bloomfield, Edward Sapir, and Franz Boggs came forward, Franz Boas came forward to establish a platform to study culture, cognition, and language. There are varieties of languages which can be called class dialects or socialics. The grammatical differences among the speakers of a language are also possibly based on their social background. The social class accents can exist due to internal differentiation of human societies such as different social groups. An example, the word school is pronounced as skull, but a group of people in the society pronounce the same word as school, same way the word first has been pronounced as fast, whereas it has to be pronounced as fast. The difference will, will exist in terms of vocabulary, items, and grammatical rules. Look at the parts of England, for example, such as Midlands of England and South part of England, quite opposite. Now, in Midlands, you say, you need your hair cutting. In the South, they say, you need your Haircut. British English meaning of the word lift 
has been represented by American English word elevator. Now British would say she has got, Americans would say she has gotten and the Scots would say that needs washed. So now the other aspect of socio-linguistic study concentrates on the influence of social living environment and its result in spoken form of the language and its impact on the spoken form of the language. Spoken language of a particular group of people may change by the influence of the surrounding environment. Irrespective of the established language structures in human mind and practice of language over a period of time, the spoken form of people will signify the variation. The American linguist William Labov's New York study can be a good example. Here, his study explains the significant difference in English pronunciation spoken by it Italian and Jewish background people living in New York. Now we look at language and its context. Social context can also influence the change in using the linguistic patterns of a language. An individual speaker of a particular language uses various linguistic structures and phrase, phrases according to the social context that the speaker is involved with. Needless to say, every human being has to adopt many social roles to perform in his day-to-day -day life. They need to act accordingly by selective linguistic structures and forms to perform expected social roles successfully in the context. For example, a boy in the classroom has to perform a disciplined student role. At the same environment, he or she has to adopt the role of a good friend to his classmates. The same boy, when he goes back home, adopts the role of a naughty boy with the beloved family members. The three different contexts, but the same boy has to perform. The observation of uh, linguistic history and language, it would not be possible to find any language that is not influenced or determined by regional or social distribution, its relationship with speakers and listeners, thought process, events and ideas in the practical society. Now this is one of the reasons for linguists to find Chamsky's why of language theory to be sterile kind of activity. Though it explicitly rejects its any concern for the relationship between a language and its user. According to Hudson, language is a set of linguistic items. Entities like speech sounds, words and grammatical structures, language theorists such as Chamsky and others concerned with all these linguistic items status and their arrangements. Certain studies show the difficulties of uh, defining the linguistic items such as speech sounds, syllables, words and sentences. On the other hand, defining the social concepts such as solidarity, identifying social class, politeness and face is very difficult. An individual may come up with her unique way of understanding. It may not be possible to correlate the two within the theory 
due to language and societies are prone to constant change. Still, a few relationships exist between language and society. We discussed the language change in relation to context, ethnic group and social class. Now, uh, the social interaction also plays a significant role to influence the change in language usage. Harvard Giles, social psychologist of language, pointed out that speakers of any language are not socio-linguistic automata. According to Harvard Giles, the social psychologist speakers did not respond automatically to situations. They can relate the situation to their personal purpose in order to maintain the clarity, making it favorable and manipulate as they want, and also to add their individual views or perceptions. The second possible way could be switching from one language to another completely. Now we look at language and social interaction. David Parkin gives his own example of Uganda for this code switching, switching from one language to another completely. Language switching takes place very often in everyday casual conversation, according to the situation, because it is a multilingual country. The capital city of Uganda is Kampala. The city Kampala is known for multilingual social environment. People from diverse ethnic groups live together with different mother tongues. Next, we take a look at the theory of structuralism. The concept of structuralism took its academic shape with the efforts of a group of eminent scholars. Let us see a few of them, namely Levi Strauss, Althusser, Foucault, Lacan, Barthes, Derrida, etc. All the thinkers had their own individual thoughts which were different from each other, but the central theme was structuralism among them. They also had some common slogans such as the death of a subject, the assault on realism, and a clearly defined doctrine. Levi Strauss was a source of guidance for other structuralists to resolve the confusion that was there between human and social sciences. It is Levi Strauss to redefine the human sciences object and he made possible the study of human institutions on scientific foundations. A short introduction to Levi Strauss. Levi Strauss was born in Brussels to a French Jewish couple. He spent all his childhood in Paris. He studied law and philosophy in Paris and worked for a couple of years as a secondary school teacher. He was appointed a member of Cultural Commission to Brazil and visited many universities and institutions as a visiting professor. Levi Strauss and his wife, Dina Davis, worked together on anthropology in Brazil during 1935 to 1939. His wife, Dina, was a professor of ethnographics. Claude Levi Strauss is a French anthropologist who contributed immensely to the construction of the theory of structuralism. Levi Strauss was honored by the Chair of Social Anthropology at Collage de France. He was also honored by universities and institutions throughout the world. He's also called the father of modern anthropology. Levi Strauss argued that civilized mind and savage mind have the same structure and human characteristics are not very different. The famous work of Levi Strauss is Tristie's Tropique. The book is culminated by all his thoughts and observations.
A very significant contribution by Levi Strauss is through his structural anthropology. Strauss was the first among the structure, structuralists to analyze the characterization of relationships in a sentence. He was the first writer to write about the ability of social science to formulate the relationships. Strauss also had respect for law and mentioned about it that law is always applicable to all the circumstances. He tells about the scientific analysis to be real, simplified, illustrative, simple presentation from complex data. It also should assure the correct predictions of actual situations. He explained the blood relationships by adopting the structural linguistics. Next, kinship relations. A. R. Radifle Brown talks about the first order relationships in the 1930s. He believed that the elementary family is a unit of structure and all the human relationships exist from that unit. Brown explains three kinds of human relationships that exist between parent and child, between siblings, and between wife and husband. Levi Strauss did not agree with Brown to limit the existence of human relationships to elementary family as a unit. The elementary unit of kinship is explained by Strauss as there are as many attitudes and behaviors as social organizations. In order to support his views about the kinship, he gives the example of the relationship between father and sons of Melanesia Islands. He also mentions uh, about the unfriendly relationship between father and sons, on the other hand, the relationships between uncle and nephews. I quote here, it is not the family's isolated terms which are truly elementary, but rather the relations between those terms, unquote. One of Levi Strauss's discoveries was attitude. It can be understood by the observations of the relationships between siblings, wife and husband and nephew and uncle. I repeat, as it is understood that the uncle and nephew's relationship was a key to understand the elementary unit of kinship in respect to all the social organizations. The kinship's elementary unit depends on the terms father, son, sister, and brother. The element of attitude was often neglected as an unimportant term in relation to psychological point of view rather than the actual system's sign. It can be understood as a phase of transition or going through some change if a boy is antagonistic towards his father. It is a natural phenomena to see change in children's behavior which seems to be hard for parents to accept sometimes. Soon after they grow out of it and become fathers, they start tormenting their own sons. As the attitudes are non-institutionalized psychological factors, they may flare up frequently. Now we shall take up Roman Jacobson. Roman Jacobson was a Russian-American linguist. Ferdinand D. Saussure's work had an impact on Roman Jacobson's thought process. He had become an eminent scholar of the structural analysis of language in the 20th century. Jacobson became a focal figure among the other linguists to think beyond linguistics to adopt the structural analysis. The concept of structuralism has been evolved from the generation of Saussurean methods. They also become the intellectual movement in Europe and the United States. Jacobson's parallelism is one of the important contributions. Jacobson believed in variant verbal poetry structure as a parallelism. Jacobson defined the term parallelism in his own technical words. Parallelism 
results in principles of equivalent projecting in axis of selection into the axis of combination. It means poet selects from the paradigmatic axis items that are contrastive and projects them onto syntagmatic axis in regular fashion. Jacobson gives Shakespeare's sonnet number 129 as an example to parallelism. He describes that the poet selects word pairs to be phonemes, equivalent, that is equivalent in sound, as well as semantic, equivalent in meaning, that is equivalent in meaning. Categories, for example, blame and shame. Roman Jacobson has inspired, Roman Jacobson was inspired by Carl Bueller's organic, organon model to write his own six language communication functions. Jacobson's six language communication functions will help to understand the verbal communication effective functioning. They are the referential function, the poetic function, the emotive function, the cognitive function, the phatic function. To conclude, the study of sociolinguistics immensely contributed for the development and advanced research in linguistics. We can understand the truth that language is not only a means of communication, but also brings in the social aspect of a particular community. People embedded with cultural ingredients fine-tuned with psychological aspects of human beings. Especially sentence structures and words are only a physical representation of information which carry along uh, all unseen emotional feelings, intentions, and thought processes. In this scenario, social linguists play, uh, play an undeniable role in the process of developing structures to understand the human feelings, thoughts, and knowledge in a better way. I hope I've been able to satisfy you with my brief introduction to this module. And for further uh, queries, you can uh, refer to the EPG Parchala website. Thank you.